Hello there, Eric Reno here for tipsquirrel.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at warping an image. But to get to that point, let me show you how I've set up today's image. Well, I went over to Stock Exchange and I got this image here by DDRCCL, which he claims is a picture of himself, so that's very nice. Uh, so we've got a picture of DDRCCL. I've downloaded that and I've popped it into Photoshop. And there we go. Now, before we get on to the warping, let me show you just a very quick technique for changing eye color, which will become apparent a little bit later on why we need to do that. So I'm gonna come down and make a new adjustment layer, clicking on this black white icon down the bottom here, and choose solid color. Then all I'm gonna do is choose a color. Well, you'd think that was the case, but look, no matter what color I choose, it's turning black and white. Let's cancel out of that. The reason for that is if I go to image and mode, you can see this in grayscale. What I'd actually like it to be in is RGB color. So click on that and away we go. We should have no problem now. So solid color. And now if I change the color, there we go, that's better. Let's change it to blue, shall we? Click OK. Now I've got my layer mask here, but if you haven't got your layer mask, if you're working along or you're trying this a bit later, uh, all you've got to do is click down on the icon here to create a layer mask. Then I'm going to press D to make sure that I have the default colors for foreground and background. So black is now my foreground color. Making sure I'm on the mask, click on the mask there, and then click Alt and Backspace. I fill the mask with black. Now that makes it much easier just to work on the eyes. If I get the zoom tool here and zoom in, just drawing a mark here around his eyes there. And then make sure I'm still on the mask and then flipping my foreground and background colors using X and then getting the brush. I've got quite a small brush here, but it has got a nice soft edge. I'm just gonna paint in where I want my color to be. Now I'm using the mouse, so I'm a bit shaky, so excuse me. I'm just gonna go over all of it there, and then over this one too, and there we have it. Okay, and then we all need to do now is drop that layer into color blend mode, and there we are. Let's drop the opacity of that down a little bit. And then on a layer mask, just make sure we get rid of the blue actually in the pupils. And that's rough and ready changing the eye color. If I zoom back out again, that's not too bad. Take it down a little bit further. And now if we want to change the eye color, all we've got to do is double click on that. And we can change it to any color we like. So we can give it a nice yellow maybe even a red, anything we like. Now, that said, we're coming up to the Olympics, and so let's make this a little bit more Olympic, which is why I chose this picture. He looks like a bit of a sportsman, doesn't he? So uh, I'm gonna get rid of this, just drag it down onto the trash can or rubbish bin, depending on where you are. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and grab this Union Jack. I'm going to use my move tool, just go and grab this and drag it over. Now you can use anything you like, of course. I'm using Union Jack because I'm British. And I'm just going to drop it on somewhere near his eyes. Again, using the zoom tool, I'm going to come right in just so I can see what I'm doing. Press spacebar to get the hand so I can move it to where I want it to be. Back to the move tool now and you can see that I can position this roughly where I want it to be. And I can change that blend mode to color. So we've got a general idea of what's going on here. But it doesn't look very realistic. It's kind of slapped onto his eye. So this is where we're gonna use the warp tool. So if I press Control and T for transform, you can see up here I've got three icons. Don't do it. Yes, thank you very much. And this one here, which takes us into warp. So let's go into warp. Now we can use our transform handles here and we can warp it around, but let's take a little bit of a better look at warping and come over to our little drop down menu here you see where it says custom if I click on that we have all kinds of presets so I'm guessing that twist probably isn't going to help us here but it's a nice little effect squeeze all kinds of things I'm not sure fish is going to help us not at all um, but bulge might do uh, let's go and look at bulge I think bulge probably will what about fish eye that was down there uh, yep, yeah, that kind of that kind of works a bit too. But let's go back to bulge, and you can see that it's bulging out the top and the bottom, but not 
the left and right. If we wanted to go the other way, we could click on this icon here and it would switch it around. So now it's bulging left and right. In our case, we don't want that to happen. But it's just a little bit too bendy for our image. So I'm going to click on the word bend here and then this becomes a scrubby slider, which means I can move left to right and alter the property. So I'm going to go left and I'm going to try and match the bulge, the curve there to his eye, which is about there. That's looking nice. Now, there's two other sliders here, H and V, horizontal and vertical. So if I click and hold on H for horizontal and scrubby slider, you can see we have different effects. So if he had his head turned slightly away from us, we'd be able to use the H slider here to make sure that our, our warp goes in the right direction. In fact, he's not really that turned, he's really quite square on, isn't he? So we don't really need much of that. But again, I'll try and match it as closely as I can to the curvature of his eye. Vertical, uh, if he was tilting his head, then we could uh, match it with those ones too. Again, he's really not, so I'm going to put that one back to zero. There we go. Good. Okay, so we're getting there. Let's click the tick and see how we're getting on. That's not bad at all. I'm going to control T and just transform it down. Now this time I am going to hold shift to constrain the proportions, but then I'm going to hold alt as well. And that constrains the proportions and transforms from the middle, which I've lined up my middle with the pupil. So yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to do. Okay, let's go just about over the top of his eyes. And then I can let go of both shift and alt and move these in very slightly. Now I do want it to overlap just so we can blend it in a little bit better a little while. Okay, now remember that fish eye? Let's go and use that, shall we? Just to give it a bit of a, a bulge. Fish eye. And just round it off nicely in that. In fact, that does match very nicely the uh, round of his, of his eye, but we could always change that as well, of course, using our sliders in much the same way as we did just a minute ago. Okay, I'm happy with that. And I click the tick. And there we have it. So now I just add a layer mask, choose D and X to make sure that black is my foreground color. Get a brush and then just go around the outside of the eye here just to get rid of anything we don't want. Obviously you can take a lot more time with it, but for the purpose of this video, I don't want you to sit there and watch me working away for hours on end. Okay, let's zoom back out again. If I press Control and zero, to fit it on the page. And let's reduce the opacity of that. Again, it's a scrubby slider. And I can just reduce that down. And there we have it. We've given him a Union Jack lens there. Very nice. Okay, there we go. All I'd need to do now is repeat that for the other, the other eye. I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me do that, but you get the general idea. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please check out all the other tutorials at tipsquirrel.com written by some amazing people with great talent and a lot of generosity. They do it for free so that we don't have to charge for you to read them. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.